are here in front of the Hinge Distillery in Northern Ireland with Michael Morris, who is International Sales Director for the company. Michael, what about the distillery? It's pretty new, isn't it? Yes. So welcome everyone to Hinch Distillery here in County Down in the north of Ireland. We're 10 miles outside Belfast in the rolling countryside here. It's called the, the, the land of drumlins, which are small, small hills. The distillery is built on the site of Killeney Estate. So we are a new distillery. We, uh, Dr. Terry Cross, who's the owner of the estate and the owner of the distillery, decided to build an Irish whiskey distillery here back in 2018. Um, planning permission for a full visitor center, a single malt distillery and a gin distillery. Mm. Uh, and here we are at the home of Hinch. So this is a very comprehensive, uh, large project. Uh, this was originally a 15 million pound build, uh, including the visitor center, which has bars, conferences and restaurants, and also a state of the art production facility. And we also, as of last year, have all of our warehousing here. So everything happens here from the bottling to maturation, uh, right through to then delivered product. And it has a beautiful courtyard. Let's walk in there. Yes. Have a look um, at that. Terry, uh, Dr. Cross was very keen on the aesthetics, um, firmly believing that um, we're trying to make a quality statement about our products and it would be reflected in our, in our home, the home of the distillery. So here we have built, um, in his vision, I suppose, a wonderful uh, center for the company. So beautiful in the sense of it's such a platform to highlight and show our distilling prowess but also when our visitors from around the globe come to visit up with us and we're now into two good years uh, of, of visitation from mm -hmm. people from the United States and Europe primarily, um, that we can look after them when they're here. And we have to stress it's not far away from Belfast, so it's easy reachable, isn't it? Very, very, uh, very easy. So 10 miles, so 30 minutes, uh, where, uh, traffic permitting. We'll take you from the city center where we're now hooked in with a lot of the major um, uh, ferry companies and the, and the boats that are coming in for people to see Belfast. Mm -hmm. And we're only a 30 minute drive away. So it's, uh, I, I, I would thoroughly recommend it. So talking about visiting, let's have a look at the visitor center you've built up y here. Yeah, absolutely. Now we're inside the brasserie, which is now at the time of day uh, empty, but not quite, Michael. Standing behind the bar. Yeah, standing behind the bar, which is not normally where I like to be. I'm normally on the other side of the bar. But yes, yeah, so this is our brasserie, which is very much styled in a, a French uh, style. Um, the owner of the company owns a chateau in Bordeaux, so he loves all things French. So here we are with a, a nod to that. Featured in the bar is, of course, all of the, the Hinch products, mm -hmm. uh, our ninth wave gin and our Hinch whiskies. But also, you might find of interest the, the the skeletal head of the giant Irish elk, which used to roam uh, Ireland over 2000 years ago. And this is an exact replica of something that was uh, uh, found in one of the bogs nearby. Um, and this is why we incorporate the, the giant Irish elk antlers in all of our branding. So that's uh, your brand animal. That's our brand animal. And uh, you're gonna see a lot more of this actually. So it's something that at the moment is quietly bespoke and quiet, but it's gonna be a much uh, stronger part of our message going forward. So here we are in the lovely uh, Killeney Estate. So um, this is the Killeney Estate room uh, where we invite our customers to come along for everything from conferences to weddings. We are now uh, all the way through the summer, got weddings big for most weekends, but we can also um, accommodate business conferences and functions and so on. The Killeney is clearly a, a nod again to with these wonderful um, wonderful crystal, which is very much in, in keeping with Terry's love of all things, French again. But I think most interestingly is our iconic windows where we have the great and the good of the Irish whiskey industry. So there you have Anais Coffee. Here we have, of course, uh, John Jamison, uh, closely followed by a very uh, great man of the, of the current um, Irish industry, John Teeling, 
and also a personal friend of mine. So it's wonderful to have John up on the window and of course, Mr. Parr, so John Parr as well. So this was our, this was our nod to the great and the good of the Irish whiskey industry, past and present. How many people can be seated in here? So on a good day, we can have 130, 140 people. Um, we're now getting into our stride. Obviously, this was heavily uh, limited as a result of the COVID restrictions. Mm -hmm. But now that they're over, we are now uh, advertising and in full flow, and we can accommodate 140 people here. And it has a great view of the stills through the window. Yes, a wonderful backdrop uh, of the stills for the alternative wedding, uh, which a lot of uh, younger people are loving. And obviously in the modern era, we have a very large smoking area as well. So we are trying our best to make, it, uh, make our home as user-friendly as possible. So here we are in uh, our reception area. Um, this is where we greet our customers when they come to see us. And it's a wonderful, again, uh, shop window for everything that we do here at Hinch. Um, this is where we kick off for the, the general visitor tours. Uh, we are doing the whiskey tours, of course. We do a gin school. And also here we have people have the opportunity to buy distillery exclusives. So this is whiskey that you can only buy here directly at the distillery. Um, plus the usual merchandise and so on that, that you would expect from, uh, expect from a distillery with um, information also on our cask program. So we also are involved in selling you make casks to individuals, people and bottlers. Mm. And this is a very successful um, thing that we've been doing over the last two years. It's actually gathering pace. It's restricted now, international. Uh, it's essentially an international um, opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. And it's going tremendously well. And while we're here, let's have a look at the distillery exclusive cask. Yeah, so what? here, uh, uh, this just gives you an example. They, they, we change these uh, on a, every other month. Mm -hmm. So this is distilled back in 2017. Um, that's the cask number. So it's a single malt that was finished mm -hmm. in, uh, it's uh, peated and finished in sherry casks. And over here, you have quite unusually a Navy strength gin at 57.1%. So this is something that, again, we're very, very keen to uh, promote here at our distillery. And now let's have a look at the distillery itself. Let's go to the where it all the magic happens. Okay, so um, really um, the education aspects of whiskey ma making and production are at the heart of our message. So here we are explaining to our customers and consumers that when we bring the, the malted barley, this is a single malt distillery. So when we bring uh, the malted barley here, uh, we do all of the milling. So this is just a representation of showing you how we actually mill, mill, the, mill the core ingredient. Mm -hmm. And we use these visuals. So for instance, we make two types of single malt here, triple distilled, uh, peated or unpeated single malt. Mm -hmm. And this obviously gives you a very, with a wonderful peat nose gives the consumer the idea that the two things are very, very different. The malted barley is dried over a peat fire or dried over hot air. And this gives us the two distinct flavors of our whiskey. Equally though, we are very keen to explain to people that we're a malt distilleries. And even though we sell a tremendous amount of blended whiskey, we have a long-term agreement to buy grain whiskey made in column stills mm -hmm. elsewhere in Ireland. And this is the blending ingredient. So this is to, again, graphically explain to people that this is grain whiskey made of maize or corn. And we blend that with the, uh, the malts that we make here. The peated malt you get like all other Irish distilleries uh, from Scotland, right? Yeah, it comes from Scotland. Uh, we're hoping that this is going to change in the near future where there's, because if you think about it in Ireland, there were uh, four distilleries 10 years ago. We're mm. now over 40, well over 40. Um, so the demand for things like peated uh, single malt are becoming much more pronounced around the world. So there are steps being taken to make it uh, generically available here in Ireland. So we hope to be one of the first in the queue for that. So here we are in the mash house. A um, couple of very distinctive things. First of all, you'll notice that we use red brick as a backdrop. This is traditional red brick from the city of Belfast. The owner, Terry Cross, and myself actually, we're all Belfast boys. 
So this red brick was very, very famous in the city and it's a backdrop to the mash house. Here we have our one ton mash. So the mash ton is a one ton mash. Everything is milled out the back, of course, brought through, it's one ton mash. And here we have, again, a one ton, uh, that's where we have our line arm. Mm -hmm. So we bring this through here where, uh, if this will be, again, you've just caught us on a, on a down day with uh, Forsyth here doing a lot of work on the equipment. We're doubling our capacity. Mm -hmm. The capacity of this distillery at the moment, up until this month, is 500,000 litres of pure alcohol uh, made in these vessels, but we're now moving to 1.2 million litres. Uh, the line arm obviously gives us a double capacity, so a one ton mash is brought over here. What we're trying to do, of course, is extract uh, the sugars before they go over the condensers. Yep, there's a good view in there of, we've got six in total, which was, is the original uh, 60,000 litres worth of uh, the Brewer's Wart. So this 72 hours is the, the, normally the time that we would be leaving. Here, getting the, uh, the beer up to about six and a half, seven percent. And of course, this is the start of the process. So this is the brewing before we get to the actual distilling. And it's just two or three steps from the mesh room to the place where the stills are. And you tell us now something about the stills. Okay, so here we have our three pot stills, classic trouble distilled uh, single malt Irish whiskey here. Each of the stills, if you notice, are named after the local mountains of Morn. So we have Sleed Donard is the largest of the mountains. So our 10,000 litre still is named after Donard. The intermediate still is named after Crude. And the small whiskey still at the end is called Wee Binion. You'll notice that very distinctive uh, pot stills with a high line arm. So we're going for uh, a very bold spirit. Uh, this will be very much part of the style of the single malt that we make here. It's not going to be the usual and in inverted commas super smooth uh, whiskey, which our Ireland is well known for, and proudly so. But we're going for a bolder, bigger spirit here. So we start with 10,000 litres still, down into 5,500 and then into 2,500. And this is classically explained here. I think most graphically you can see here in the whiskey safe that in still number one, mm -hmm. you can see that we're trying to uh, distill away the impurities. So everything from the off notes to the, uh, everything that's wrong about, we're trying to get to the heart and the heart of the whiskey is going to be here before you get your actual ish kebabs, we call it here in Ireland. So this is a wonderful process where very interactive with the distillers. After they do the first distillate in the, the first still and they get it into the intermediate still, if they're not happy, they can obviously take samples at that point and they can start it all over again. But ultimately what it's all about here at our distillery is we binion and the whiskey still and this is the actual Irish whiskey at, uh, ready for going to casking and maturation. Where do you end up uh, ABV wise with the new make? Yeah, so the new mix for it's going to be 64, 65%. Uh, that's, that's the optimum range that we're looking for. And over to my left, there's new equipment. Yeah, so we are currently working with uh, Forsyth from Scotland um, to double our capacity. So these are the new vessels which are enabling the three stills to double capacity. Uh, this is all a work in progress at the moment. Yes, but we're here. going, we, as you can hear, but we are going to go uh, to 24-7 production. Very noisy at the moment. Not normally as noisy as this. But this is the Forsyth guys working at it, so it's a work in progress. We hope to have everything finished from, by the end of this month, and we go to 24-7 production. So we're all very excited about this. So you're not? Uh, upping the number of the stills, but you're only upping the number of the backbones. Uh, absolutely, because the stills, uh, uh, the capacity can be uh, increased by the, the backup um, equipment, uh, and that's the, limit. the limiting factor is the 60,000 litres 
capacity that we have there at the moment. That's limiting us, and this takes us to a whole new level. Okay, so here we are in what we call the Spectrum Room, which is really the tasting room. Um, this is, again, part of the ongoing communication with the customers. So they've seen the whiskey being made. Mm -hmm. We're then explaining to people that all whiskey, irrespective of, is a clear liquid. So these are different types of, there's blended whiskey, there's grain, single malt, peated, single malt, unpeated. We even have pot still whiskey here, which is a traditional style made in Ireland. So this is to explain that all whiskey starts life as a clear spirit. And then, however, it's more about what then happens to make whiskey the wonderful liquid that it is. So we're explaining about casking, the fact that the good casks, bourbon casks for us, uh, B1s and B2s have a massive impact on the flavor of the whiskey, the style of the whiskey, and also coloration, all important. So a lot of people actually who come to this whiskey distillery for the first time are not aware of how whiskey achieves its natural color. So this is again where we explain about the uh, about staves mm -hmm. and what happens and how it happens and people are tremendously interested in this. And we then take it to graphically explain that your white spirit, after a minimum of three years, Irish whiskey and Scotch whiskey, three years minimum on the island of Ireland, you then get uh, your, 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 whisk, your ish kebab, so it's now mm -hmm. three year old spirit. And this is explaining to people that if you, you use third fill or second fill ex bourbon casks, you're not going to get a wonderful color naturally. But if you use first fill ex bourbon, you do get this wonderful natural color. We, in one of our whiskies, which is our five year old, we also do a double wood, which is four years in um, first fill bourbon cask and then one year in virgin oak, which will be a, a very heavy char. So you get a much better color. Here is an example of French oak casks mm. from Chateau de la Ligne, which is our wine in uh, Entre du Mer in Bordeaux. Yeah. So we use French oak. And I guess most interestingly, and th this is what our distillers are playing with at the moment, we're using lots of different Oloroso sherry casks, rum casks, virgin oak casks, as you can see here, even tequila, port casks. Mm. So this is where the Irish whiskey companies are uh, all pushing for their points of differentiation because you've all these new distilleries, you've a lot mm. of new liquid coming on board and it's all coming into the market around the same time. Yeah. So this is one of the reasons why we get our points of difference on the cast. So we, we, when Terry bought this company or built this company, we bought around 5 million euros of casks elsewhere on the island and this is the whiskey that we currently sell. So it's down to us to change the profile and style through wood management in one of the areas that makes it very, very interesting. Now on this table there are some strange things you could explain to us. Okay, so this was our response to the COVID restriction where we can't have people picking up the whiskey bottles mm -hmm. to actually smell them and so on. So we devised this little, um, uh, this little gizmo here where you can actually get a that clear spirit there is the um, single malt, unpeated, and that means our consumer can get a very nice, uh, real, real impression of what we have here in the bottles. Yeah. And this is my favorite, the peated. Mm. It's amazing. Absolutely, and um, it's interactive. Mm. It it's interesting, and it allows people to get a proper appreciation of what they've just seen outside all the way from the original room where we looked at the barley, peated and unpeated, and then up here they can see with the finished liquid. And I can even smell it here. Yeah, you can yeah. smell it here, and of course afterwards you can actually taste some. So here we are in the, uh, the working heart of Hinch in our yard, and as you can see, we have just taken delivery of uh, four containers worth of B1 and B2 bourbon casks from Kentucky. Um, this is all gearing up for the double, uh, doubling our capacity, which mm. is ongoing, which you heard earlier on. So um, our warehouse, our number one warehouse is almost full now of, um, of 
uh, full casks and these are about to be filled so in the next uh, number of weeks we're going to announce um, more maturation warehouses for the increased capacity so it's a big part of the fact that we're developing so uh, yeah. quickly will uh, the new warehouses be on site or? that that's uh, we have planning permission to build mm -hmm. uh, more warehouses here on site and at the moment the the board of directors here are deciding whether we go with an interim step and hold some casks elsewhere or whether we build all of the warehouses here on Terry's land. Talking about warehouses, let's move into this one. Let's go and see the warehouse. Yes. This is warehouse number one and yep. at the moment yep. the only one. Yeah, the only one. Well, what's the capacity of this Ten, one? 10,000 casks. 10,000 casks. Oh yes, that smell. <sighs> so, how do you know where the different casks are? Well, yeah. well, I, w how we know where all the various casks are is our distiller, uh, Will, Hi, is very much, he's the man with the answers. Nice and to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, William, how do you know what's in which cask? <laughs> Um, uh, we have a massive in inventory, so we have um, a dedicated software system that tells us exactly whenever we come up, the guys record its location, um, and then that feeds back into our um, inventory management system. So, so thank okay. it doesn't doesn't look like it, but we know where everything is. <laughs> so the. These are all bourbon casks and wine casks? Yeah, so um, about 55% of what we've filled um, in the last 12 months is a uh, first full bourbons. Mm -hmm. um, all, everything's unrinsed and then we have the, the, the remaining is filled with, um, there's a lot of first full, second full sherry casks um, and then a lot of fortified wines. So we have Madeira, Marsala, Ruby Ports, um, Shiraz, uh, PX. Uh, various types of sherry um, right. so yeah there's there's lo lots of exciting exciting cask finishes in here as well where do you get the bourbon casks from other specific distilleries in uh, no so we we actually mix our, our source um, we basically just if, if anything ever happens in the future that mm -hmm. um, said distillery stops selling um, directly to other distilleries mm -hmm. we, we don't want to lo lose our flavor profile so um, we, we have a mixed bag so everything we take in um, main priority for us is making sure they're unrinsed um, so still retaining the goodness of, of what was matured in there before before we take it. Okay and what happens if you get a cask that's not perfect that's leaking somewhere? Yeah, so Do you fix it yourself? Yeah, yeah, so? Um, yeah so we were definitely not not coopers but we can um, we can we can do small repairs on barrels um, we work with a lot of good cooperages so all the mm. casks coming in you make it one out of every 210 that that doesn't fill properly um, but to date thankfully and fingers crossed it stays that way we um, we have a really good supply of, of casks coming in well I would suggest then that we free some of the content of the casks. yes ab ab <laughs> absolutely You're quite full here right now, right? Yeah, so we, um, we've been waiting on a... Is that an extra layer? That's, so everything has to be reworked to that height. Oh so my yeah, we, we waited a long time for a, an ATAX forklift. Wow. Um, so everything needs to be stacked, stacked a little bit higher over, wow. the, ne over, over the next next two weeks. Ah. So you have everything palletized? Everything is palletized, yeah. Bar, um, except the, the original 161 casks that we filled for the Ankea Down, mm -hmm. um, they, they're all Dunnage style mm -hmm. warehouses. So they're, they're racked, so they are. This is, this is one I met earlier. Oh, that looks good. So we've got our standard new make malt. We have our heavily peated, mm -hmm. um, two and a half time distilled peated malt. Um, and then we've got young spirit as well. So we've got a, a first fill Marsala filled in March 2022. We have a heavily peated two and a half times distilled um, bourbon cask filled in August 2022. Mm -hmm. And then we have a first fill sherry cask um, filled in October 2022. Uh, how many peated runs do you do? So we do one, one peated campaign a year, mm -hmm. but it's quite a big campaign. So we fill 
roughly 100,000 litres pure liter, or liters of pure alcohol annually. Mm -hmm. um, with the, the plans to increase that, we have, we're, we're just about to release a new SKU as well, so mm -hmm. the, our repeated demand has went up. Yeah, so uh, 100,000 litres is about a fifth of your capacity right now? At, at the moment, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. In the next number of weeks, our expansion to take us to a million litres of pure alcohol will be live. Um, we heard them. Yeah, 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 you can you can definitely hear them. So yeah, it'll it'll be live in the next next couple of weeks. So we will most likely double, if not slightly more, um, double our repeated campaign.